last but definitely not the least, collateral management. When all is said and done, when the execution is over, when the traders have gone home, it's the collateral ops guy or gal who are sitting in the trenches, waiting for the margin calls to come in, validating the ones that go out, making sure that they're protecting the interests of the firm at all times. Collateral management, my friends, is going to be the most important game in town going forward as a result of Dodd-Frank. What you will hear in this discussion will, for the most part, validate that and hopefully put the fear of God in your hearts by the time you get out. Without much ado, let me get started. Let's do introductions. Amir Kadri, he is the global head of collateral middle office at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Amir, could you give us a quick overview of your position and, and your background? Sure. Collateral middle office is part of overall uh, middle office and operations function uh, within uh, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. My team does everything, simply put, my team does everything other than making margin calls and moving collateral. We are involved on the analytic side of collateral, on the reporting side of collateral, and on the control side of collateral. Thank you. We have Judson Baker. He is the SVP and product manager at Northern Trust. Judson, could you just give us an overview? Sure, thanks. Um, my, my responsibility is to, um, to make sure that Northern's uh, post-trade derivative services uh, for our three general lines of business um, meets regulations, meets clients' demands, and so forth. Um, our three lines of business, and they all come relevant to this discussion, is um, outsourcing, so when we act as the middle and back office for asset managers. Uh, the second one is our custody business, so when we're safekeeping the collateral or when the collateral our assets need to leave our clients' accounts and be pledged to the exchanges or the clearing firms. Um, that's the line of business. And then the third one is fund administration. So mutual fund administration, hedge fund administration, and so forth, striking a NAV, doing all the post-trade recs and things like that. My responsibility is to make sure that um, we're compliant and um, we have a well-running um, service offering for our clients when they trade derivatives. Thank you. Let's get started with the questions. Uh, the first question is for you, Amr. We've heard a lot in, uh, in, in print and in white papers and in seminars, people talking about this concept of a collateral squeeze. Ordinarily, when you say squeeze, you, know, you, know, you want to sort of think about some other thing. But when you talk about collateral squeeze as such, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Is this real? Should people be thinking about this? And if so, how should, you, how should they start preparing for this? It's a bear hug. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a real squeeze. Um, as Bill Clinton um, said at the Democratic National Convention, do the math and see if it adds up. So the math is like this. I'll give you some statistics, um, and that, that should give you a sense of what kind of squeeze are we talking about. The collateral held by dealers, and this, these are statistics, statistics that recently were put together. The collateral held by all dealers is approximately $3.7 trillion right now. The size of the Fed and ECB balance sheet is approximately $3 trillion. The quantitative easing that the large central banks have been involved in in recent times is in the range of $0.5 to $1 trillion. The capital of the largest 16 banks in the global banking system is approximately $1 trillion. In a recent analysis, the total collateral requirements for IM, and this is the non-sexy bilateral uncleared side of the house. I'm not talking about what will be required on the clearing side, which everybody has been talking about since the morning. I am talking about the bilateral OTC uncleared side of the house. The way the rules are proposed today, the estimate is anywhere from $30 trillion of new IA required to $2 trillion, depending on a, what kind of assumptions you apply to the calculation. 